Alright guys, we've scoured the planet so far, hop, skipping and jumping our way across the most terrifying international depictions of horror cinema and finally our feet have landed firmly in the horrifying quagmire of Mexican horror cinema, a place filled to the brim with a deep history of horror fandom and more insanely horrific creatures and creations that make up one of the richest and deeply seeded traditions of folklore known to contemporary fiction. Mexico is a fascinating place, an intriguing conglomeration of both new and old where history quickly comes colliding with the modern era, and that particular equation has made for some damn good horror movies. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Mexican Horror Movies. Roll the clip. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. But for the curious amongst you, that scene was from Alejandro Jorodsky's 1989 insane horror art masterpiece. I don't even know what it is to be honest, Santa Sangre, which is perhaps one of the strangest but also incredible films in the whole of cinema. However, it kind of doesn't hit all of the parameters to be a Mexican horror for this list and it also definitely won't be everybody's cup of tea, so consider it our honourable mention for this particular list. Kicking off at number 5, Under the Salt, 2008. And that particular hodgepodge trailer may pretty well sum up this film because in all likelihood it may be very difficult to get your hands on given the fact that its distribution was pretty much ignored outside of Mexico. However if you can you'll be in for one hell of a surprising horror thriller, wrapped up in a classic tale of intrigue and the tried and tested whodunit that we all know and love. However if you're expecting just a bland serial killer horror then don't worry because the unique sense of weird uneasiness that Mexican horror is synonymous for is this film bread and butter and in many ways that weirdness manages to subvert the classic setup of serial killer detective cat and mouse. Written and directed by Mario Munoz, the backdrop of Under the Salt takes place in the small regional town of Santa Rosa de la Sal, a newly fitted housing project situated in a massive stretch of isolated salt mines where pretty much everyone and anyone are employed to harvest the natural resource throughout its acres and acres of precious salt flats. That's before the body of a young girl shows up calcified in the shallow salty waters and the government sends in a veteran narco task force commander Trujillo thinking it to be wrapped up in the epidemic of criminal warfare that has plagued northern Mexico. Now I'm not going to lie because you'll probably see the finish line before Under the Salt actually gets there but for the sake of a slightly predictable ending the bulk of this film plus the setting and the uniquely Mexican take on the detective thriller is more than worth the payoff for a slow creeping stroll through modern Mexican horror cinema. Coming in at number 4, We Are The Flesh 2017. Este no es un pinche reventón cualquiera. And talking of modern Mexican horror cinema, holy moly, if this isn't holding up some kind of mirror to its director's perception of society, I'm not exactly sure what is. And also, I really, really hope it's that kind of allegory because this film is hella messed up. Like, I'd even warn you away from watching this film if you're of a tamer disposition because We Are The Flesh will be incredibly difficult to stomach for most people. But on the flip side to that, if you're into the extremist size of horror cinema, you will absolutely be a fan of this movie. Written and directed by Emiliano Rocha Minta in his debut feature film, We Are The Flesh is Mexico's take on the controversial expression of French extreme cinema and it deliberately pushes the boundaries of how far we're willing to go as an audience. It tells the tale of two siblings, Lucio and Fauna, who are roaming around a modern wasteland after civilization has collapsed following an unknown apocalypse. After nearly starving to death and failing to forage for food, they stumble across a strange man named Mariano who offers them safety and shelter, but it comes at a price. I won't say it anymore because really this film need only be watched once to realise the true horror inside, but also it's important to note that what separates We Are the Flesh from the likes of Gaspar No and the French Extreme is that this film is tinged with an oddly familiar sense of folklore and fantasy. The story is pretty much Hansel and Greta with a few added drops of Mexican superstition for good measure, all wrapped up in a grotesque collision of how far the visceral soul of humanity will go just to survive. Also if you couldn't tell, it's messed up, really messed up. Next up at number 3, Alucarda 1977. Don't listen to them, 
Betty, don't listen to them. Our Lord and Master, I acknowledge. Go out of the room. Sister Mary, take the children out of the room. Go. And you may be pleased to know that we'll be departing from the modern extremities for a while now, and instead, we'll be looking back at one of the greatest classic horror movies that Mexico has ever produced Alucarda, a film that, if it was released and distributed internationally, would have probably given The Exorcist and The Omen a run for their money. And what was the best way to be incredibly controversial when you were making a horror movie in the 70s? Set it in a convent, of course. Released in 1977 and directed by Juan Lopez Moctezuma, Alucarda makes no departure from the classic horror depiction of demonic possession and Satanism, but instead relies on some absolutely insane performances from its two leading actors, Tina Romero and Susanna Camini, who literally take this film to the next level with more satanic rituals and chants than you'd ever like to expect. It tells the tale of Alucarda, an orphan girl who has lived her entire life being raised by nuns in a convent deep in the countryside. That's before another orphan girl shows up, Justine, and instantly the pair hit it off, so much so that they inevitably stumble upon a band of mysterious gypsy cultists and subsequently unleash an all-powerful demonic entity in the Mexican countryside. In many ways, Alucarda strikes along the same vein as Ken Russell's 1971 horror, The Devils, and relied heavily on its imagery and desecration of iconography to stir the pot back in the day. Now though, what remains is one of the greatest cinematic performances of two satanic witches descending into damnation in the whole of horror cinema, and because of that, it's absolutely awesome. Swinging in at number two, The Devil's Backbone, 2001. Santi. And yes, of course, you knew that Guillermo del Toro was waiting in the wings to stake his claim on this particular list, and rightly so, but the fact of the matter remains, we could probably make all five points on this list with a del Toro entry. Kronos, Pan's Labyrinth, Mimic, but that would just be unfair to the rest of our other entries. So instead, we're firmly presenting what I consider to be del Toro's greatest work of horror so far. The Devil's Backbone, a film that rightfully earned the genius of Mexican horror cinema the international recognition he deserves today. The Devil's Backbone is an incredibly unnerving horror film, and not unlike many of the other entries on this list, it's delivered in its uniquely unsettling blend of fantasy and horror that Mexican horror cinema has become so synonymous for, mainly, thankfully, down to the inspiration and influence set upon Del Toro as a director. Not unlike Del Toro's 2006 masterpiece Pan's Labyrinth, the backdrop of this film is the Spanish Civil War that raged throughout the late 1930s, a historical event that has been the underlying theme between most of his work, and it tells the tale of a young orphan boy, Carlos, who arrives in the care of two Republican loyalists who run an orphanage, taking in the many displaced children across the countryside. I won't say any more because if you haven't seen The Devil's Backbone, it's an experience best seen through unassuming eyes, but know that this film is an incredible blend of both the supernatural and the horrors of humanity, and no one does it quite like Del Toro. Give it a watch, you won't be disappointed. And finally coming in at our number one spot. Poison for the Fairies, 1984. <laughs> Because while Guillermo del Toro is rightfully the master of modern Mexican horror cinema, he owes his influence to some of the masterful predecessors that sparked the supernatural and paranormal bound influence on his work. Poison for the Fairies is in fact perhaps one of the most influential horror films in the whole of Mexican cinema and is often cited as an influence in the country's wider scope of genre. And it comes from a director who only really achieved the credit he deserved after his death in 1997, Carlos Enrique Taboada, a cult horror icon in Mexican cinema and the personification of the two key themes in Mexican horror, the supernatural and the horror of humanity. And it's summed up perfectly in the last film he ever made, Poison for the Fairies, released in 1984 and written and directed by Taboada himself. If you want to understand Mexican horror, watch this film because it says it all far, far better than I ever could. It tells a tale of a young girl named Veronica, an orphan living in a strange old house with her grandmother and nanny, a woman fascinated by the occult and Mexican superstition. Soon Veronica meets another young girl, Flavia, and so begins their slow descent into wind. Witchcraft. This film needs to be experienced, and please don't let the dated tone of this movie put you off, because it's a horror film like no other. For one, the entire thing is shot at the height level of the two young actors, and the adults of the story are often pictured only half in frame, and it's small details like that that truly mark the point of Taboada's work. It's made with love and care, and handcrafted to near cinematic perfection, and also, 
It's a damn fine horror movie. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five scariest Mexican horror movies. What do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. First up, Fluffy Pink Chaos says, Jack, your hair, it's so fluffy. <laughs> well, if you want to know my secret, it's the wind. And finally, Sizzamy Timbers says, just found this channel, one of my new favourites. You're good at describing things. Hmm. Well, thank you very much, Sizzamy Timbers. And you're good at making screen names, because that is hilarious. Good job, buddy. Well, on that note, horror fans, that's unfortunately all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.